Hi, this is Fred with Quality One Engravers. I'm going to show you a trick of doing uh, 3D engraving with a 2D engraver. Uh, looks really awesome if you do some reverse engraving on acrylic. I'm going to go File, Import, and here's this Planet Motorsports. It's an EPS file. Now, when you bring this in, I like dragging a, a box. Uh, the reason being is sometimes it'll give you some little tiny uh, image so just be in the habit of doing that okay and now what I want to do is I need to I know that the customer wanted this three inches high so let me go ahead and just make it exactly three and my little lock is on so it's exactly three and control G to group it oops I gotta reselect it control G to group it and alt home and N to center it on the plate and then I know I want it mirrored because I'm going to be engraving this in reverse. Now, I'm looking at this job and I can see that there are real sharp points on this Nike swoop. So, the swoop itself I know is going to be at a smaller cutter. But let me just take, I'm going to go Alt G to ungroup it. And I'm going to take this entire section, do Control H, which is to make a path, F7 to zoom in and I have to do two things with this logo. I have to determine uh, what's going to happen when it's at its deepest and what's going to happen when it's at its shallowest. So really doesn't matter which one you start with, but I usually start with the deepest. So I'm going to create a tool path. I'm going to do the fill. I like the sweep tool down and I'm going to try an 80 cutter and I know that my final depth is going to be 0.13 and I'm going to say OK. Now if I click away this is the final pass so if you're looking at it from the far side when it engraves you'll see little gaps where it's deeper in some portions of the letter so that's not any good so I need to undo that so I'm going to go engrave create tool path fill and this time I'm going to change it back down to maybe a 60 cutter and say OK. And this one looks a little bit better, a little bit thin in some areas, but still will look pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to go engrave, engraving, uh, create a tool path, do my fill. And now I'm going to change it to a zero depth and then say OK and now I'm gonna look at it again and this time I'll press alt N to see what it's gonna look like and I'm seeing that I'm rounding off a lot of the the little spikes here in the letter probably will not be too big an issue because I know that I'll have a ramp coming up to it but I'm gonna drop it down one more time in cutter size at least so I'm going to just delete this and delete this one. So I'm going to select it again. F7. Engrave, create tool path, fill. And I'm going to make it a, a 50 cutter because I, I want to get closer in those corners. And just from my experience, I know I don't have to look at it again. So I'm going to make it the 0.13. Must be one pass. And on this pass, I'm going to make it 77% which is a lot of overlap and I'm going to turn off alt n now if you can imagine do you see how rounded this is all the lettering looks like hot dogs this is how your fill would look like if you engraved it with the standard engrave lab scheme of things it would be hot dog shapes top and bottom the s's would all be hot dog shapes and all of these would it would actually look pretty horrible looking engraving but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Alt N to turn that off. Now what I'm going to do is click on this again. I have a hotkey Control Alt H and now I'm going to change it to 0.12 and then I'm going to change my overlap down to something a lot more reasonable like about 25% and say OK. And now I'm going to zoom in just to show you what I'm doing here. Click away. Click back here. Control Alt H. 
0.10 and then just kind of watch the screen and you'll see this new path made control alt h one can click away click back on it control alt h and i'm trying to work on um, catlink to come up with a, a macro to do this that would make it really easy to do so i could program my first and my last control alt h 70 click again control alt h i know this gets a little boring but control alt h just a couple more just to show you control alt h oops 40 this does take a while to engrave uh, so be prepared to charge your customer because of the uh, the value of the product and your time but you will see that this will be one amazing piece of engraving when you're done you know, ten thousandths and actually I was supposed to be at a fifth yeah I am at a 50 cutter and then a lot of times I'll do a control alt H at um, 05 and go OK and then Alt N and this is this is the shape that I'm going to end up with now what I do is I go back and I do the exact same thing on this one I'll group it engrave create tool path do a fill change this to 77 take this to 0.13 and say OK and then it's really important that you click on it again control alt H if that's your hotkey of course 0.12 and then change this back to 25 or it'll take three times the amount of time to engrave and the reason for doing that is it makes you're gonna be looking at this fill pattern from the other side so you want that as smooth as possible so you'll complete that and then once you select just your P50 you would select this and send it to the engraver just output and that's what you're going to engrave now it's not on selected so it did everything but anyways this is what you would send it is and because you did the deep pass first that's the one that it will engrave first and then it will move up now just to show you the other piece here this one I know I used F7. I used a 30 cutter. So if you go create tool path and you do a fill, and I used a 30 cutter on it, and I'm going to go 0.13 deep and say OK. I can see that it looks pretty decent. This will be the, the cleaned out bottom. And then I'm going to select this again and go engrave create tool path fill and take it to either 0 or 0 0.005 and then say OK you can see I'm gonna get when I press alt n you can see I'm gonna get quite a ways up the swoop and usually that's about the best that you can do is is if not I'd have to engrave this maybe with a 20 or a 15 cutter but just from my own experience when they get it that close it's usually plenty good enough and uh, remember to charge for it hope you enjoyed the video